Hi, my name is Nancy Bush, and I'm an AP English language teacher in Solon, Ohio, and I'm also an AP English language consultant. Um, one of the skills that was listed as line of reasoning um, with the updates to AP English language this year was rather challenging for my students. And so I had done things with it through the year, um, but this was finally the thing that worked the best, and I would like to have an opportunity to share this lesson idea with you today, which I think you could use as is, but could be easily adapted adapted to a new article and use within your class. Um, so the way that I'm going to share it with you is first I will share with you um, the Washington Post article that my students read. It was by Harry Stevens. Um, it was at the beginning of the stay at home order in Ohio and you know across the rest of the country as well. And he, Stevens, includes a bunch of animations in his um, article to help prove to readers why the stay at home order should be effective. Um, again, the date was March 14th, so you know that that's right about when the stay at home order probably began for you as well. Um, so then I will share my assignment with you and I will share a student exemplar with you, which I've color coded. So I think it will be really clear as to how I know the student understands the line of reasoning and how um, he built on that throughout his short paragraph assignment. Okay, so first I would like to share the article with you. So the article is titled, Why Outbreaks Like Coronavirus Spread Exponentially and How to Flatten the Curve. And so basically in the beginning, he just introduces us to the problem, right? After the first case of COVID-19, the disease caused by the new strain of coronavirus was announced, reports of infections trickled in slowly. And so he's like, okay, here's what's happening. He has a graph to support the point that he's making, just a static graph. Um, then he starts to introduce animations. And here you can see a healthy person is indicated in blue and a sick person is indicated in brown. So each healthy person bumps into a sick person and then that person is sick too. So he just starts off very simply with a simple graph. Then he takes it to the next level and says, okay, well then what if the after being sick, then they're recovering covered and they're purple and they can't be animated again. So again, here he's just really introducing us to um, the simulation and how he will use color coding to make a bigger point. Um, again, he uses the text, the words of the document to add to what he's doing with the animated graphics that he uses. So this first example, he says, okay, let's imagine that we have a random small town and we do nothing. What happens if we do nothing? And so this graph is to show what happens in that case. So you can see the change over time. Um, we have the blue, which represents the healthy people. They are bumping in, you know, the brown dots are bumping into them and making them sick. And then slowly people are re becoming recovered. And so you can kind of see here what he's saying is happening. And I won't show you all the animations as long, but this one, I just kind of wanted you to have that understanding of it. So then he ties it to um, that the simulation town is small because of how many people there are there and what will happen. Then he says, okay, what if we have a forced quarantine, such as in China, and gradually people start to leave the quarantine. So at first, all the brown dots are on one side, and then they slowly, as soon as one slips to the other side, then here's what happens, right? And so the text underneath is, whoops, as health experts would expect it, it proved impossible to completely seal everything off. Um, then he moves to the next simulation, and this simulation is the social distancing that we've been living in. Again, we have blue representing the healthy dots, brown representing the sick dots, and then purple representing people who are recovered, and there's a little bit of a time delay, and then that happens. And so you can kind of see from both the graph and the chart that's going above it that's color coding. Um, overall, how this is a more effective system and why we should consider it. And so then after this chart, he has yet one more simulation. Again, he explains them and applies them to real um, locations in the text in between. He has one more simulation. And in this simulation, he shares what if we had extensive social distancing? And that's probably more like what we encountered at the beginning of the social distancing. Um, and so here you can see how much slower it is, how the curve has truly been flattened in this one. Um, and the purple, you know, recovery dots are just starting to creep in if you're watching the top of the um, bar move across there. Okay, so basically the task that I gave my students then was to let me zoom in a second for you. Okay, the task I gave my students 
was because of the line of reasoning, um, I wanted them to pay attention to the scale. And I, this is the exact document that I gave them. <clears throat> Explain how the organization of a text creates unity and coherence and reflects a line of reasoning. Write an effective paragraph explaining how Stephen's organization creates unity and coherence and reflects his line of reasoning. Begin with a strong topic sentence. So again, building on some skills that we have um, practiced earlier in the year because it was March when I made this assignment. Um, so for this, I think some things that my students were struggling with. I was trying to get them to see, they understood an author, they can usually figure out the author's purpose and be fairly accurate about that. Um, but understanding how everything that contributes to the author's purpose and the way they build it is their line of reasoning from the order they put things in to like, why did he use simulations? Like all of those things represent the line of reasoning. I thought Hal did an especially good job in my class with this assignment. And I have used his um, exemplar with permission. Okay, so he says, Harry Stevens' Washington Post article is structured such that one is introduced to a relatable scenario and later introduced to hypotheticals, which become increasingly more effective. So that's the first part of his topic sentence. And as you can see, there's a lot of organization words here, right? Structured, introduced, later introduced become increasingly more effective. And when I get to become increasingly more effective, that's when I knew that Howe understood more about the assignment because other kids just wrote about each graph separately and didn't have that connection between them. And that connection in the way they build is what was essential to the students understanding Stephen's line of reasoning and why he put them in that order. He starts with the one that is least effective and he moves to the one that is most effective. So when you get to the end, you're like, yeah, we should do that, right? Um, and then he gets to Stevens' purpose. Through the source of the hypothetical simulations, Stevens deduces the most effective prevention method. So he understands the order of the examples um, that Stevens decided to use in the text. Stevens begins the article by introducing a topic, so again, tied to the organization there, all should be familiar with, COVID-19, and builds upon that by emulating the infectivity of a hypothetical disease, which he dubs simulitis. Um, again, more organization words, introducing, builds, right, the next sentence, the first scenarios. I also like that Howe understood that these were simulations. Some of my kids um, kind of generalized a little too much, and they kept saying, well, what happens with COVID-19, with what happens with COVID-19? Um, I felt that that was, you know, just a bit general because they were simulations and we weren't exactly sure what was going to happen. So I really like that how differentiated and understood the simulations were not exactly the disease of COVID-19, but a prediction of what it would be like. Um, then he gets into some of the unity, right? Um, the simplistic simulations of a small scale infection guarantee that he and the reader are on the same page. So that language there on the same page, he's building unity. He's He used those easy color coded dots first. So then you'd be like, okay, I understand what's happening because if you didn't have that understanding, then how was he going to direct you through the line of reasoning? Um, similarly, with a firm basis set, right? We have that firm unity between the reader and Stevens, and so he can continue. Stevens ties, another organization word, his basic small population simulation to a larger population. So here's how that connection is being made. I felt like how really understood um, the unity and the way things were working together. In doing so, Stevens creates flow. I felt that was a coherence word and unity. So unity throughout his article, while also mirroring the cases of COVID-19. Again, tying back to the line of reasoning, his purpose, what's happening with COVID-19 um, that he introduced at the beginning. He coherently transitions into more scenarios, quarantine, moderate social isolation, um, and extensive socialization, uh, social isolation, which build off and alleviate problems found in the previous simulations. These scenarios are plotted with an amount of infection beside the simulation. When these four scenarios are compared, Stevens' line of reasoning is clear. So again, really line of reasoning. <clears throat> A visible difference in the effect of the scenarios is reflected in the uninfected population. Each consecutive simulation makes sure that less people are infected, unifying the article by tying into the last scenario. 
Stephen started off with a real life situation and a simple hypothetical to make sure all the readers are on the same page. He then creates a sense of unity throughout the article such that the next simulation is based on data from the previous one. Again, this is from my student, Hao Chi, and he um, gave me permission to use this. And I just feel like the color coding um, I, is something that I might add to the lesson for next year. I will, pro I will probably pick you know, a new and updated article based on what things are happening in the world so that they can kind of keep current with things. Um, but again, I did put the skill exactly there above the lesson. And then for my students, I'm like, here's what you need to be able to show me that you can do. And again, I pretty much rewrote it in the prompt statement right there. And then when I went through and color coded it again next year, I might have my students go through either their own or a partner's um, text and color code those keywords because those keywords are how I know that he understands the line of reasoning. And so then I made a Loom video just about like this one for my students. And we looked at Hal's um, <clears throat> little paragraph. And when we did, I felt like my kids got it more when they saw the video that I had created for them. And that was one of the reasons that I wanted to share this video with you. So I hope this helps you and your students to understand line of reasoning better. I hope you can, um, you know, maybe gain a new strategy for using color coding to highlight these key terms for your kids and good luck teaching AP next year. Thank you.